Hello, it's graduation day. I'm running late, but I will see you guys on the way. I just want to start the vlog. This is what I'm wearing. This We're in the regalia fit. I'll get a better view at the venue though, but bye. Oh. Wow. Oh, you brought your nice camera. Yes. Unfortunately for me, I have lost the 2024 tassel for my cap, so now I have to like retrace my steps and hope no one picked it up. Hands in the Okay, so Maggie, what are you excited about? So I'm so happy about to graduate to your course because I didn't know how to speak English like two years ago. Sorry if I missed out something. we focus our attention on areas where we feel we need the most improvement. But I believe we re reach our greatest potential when we choose to lead from areas of our strength. If you spend your time and energy focused on your weaknesses, you'll probably only get to average, and nobody wins by being average. Kere Eke. So we are officially done with graduation. My mom and sister left earlier. Um, honestly, it's like a day or two after graduation. I just wanted to end the vlog, but I am so happy that I can close this chapter. Graduation day was really hectic, honestly. As you've seen, like, I mean, I lost my tassel within like five minutes of getting to the venue and had to like run around. It was so hot. I was like sweating like profusely, but it was so nice to just like be with my cohort backstage and even while we were sitting down. The graduation speaker, he was the CEO of T-Mobile and a former Wharton grad, undergrad, not MBA. I mean, obviously like this is what successful people do, men probably more so. Like he has, he knows that he has nothing to prove to us. And so it was clear that I don't really think he put in as much effort in his speech, which was kind of unfortunate because I do think our class is going into the world at a moment where the job market has been really tough and um, and I felt like this was an opportunity for him to kind of like inspire people and he was saying things that I mean we all know to be true he was saying things like keep in touch with each other what else did he say see it's so hard for me to remember and he, he said something about storytelling like great leaders are great storytellers and I remember when he said this I looked over to my friend Sophia and I was just like um he's yet to tell a story so it's gonna be hard to really remember any of this because of that whatever it's fine like i i think we were looking for a little bit more the student speaker from our graduating class was actually really good about that and had some really good insights and tidbits one of the, like the really cool moments of the graduation ceremony i don't even know if you can see it or hear it we have like a group chat for our cohort and we have i think we have like 12 cohorts in the entire class the graduating class and we were going to be the last ones we our cohort was 4l so we were the last ones and so unfortunately some people were leaving the ceremony like they stayed further to get their little moment and walk across the stage 
and then they left because we could see empty seats like throughout the the seated area uh, for for the graduates. And I remember thinking, well, it's not like the classiest thing. And I think I, I would have stayed the entire time because why come to graduation? The ceremony itself was maybe two and a half hours long. So, I mean, I had already like thought about <laughs> staying there for two and a half hours up and they kept really, they were really good about keeping the schedule. I think by the time I walked out of the stadium, it was three, I checked my phone, it was 3.39. So they were really good um, and it was supposed to end at 3.30. So there was really no reason to leave early. Um, maybe other people had extenuating circumstances, but anyways, so, and we had noticed that like, you know, in the beginning people were like cheering really loudly. And then if you had like a big family, you would hear like this uproar in the audience as they were like cheering, as they heard your name being called. But like, there are some people who like, maybe they didn't have family there and their names would be called out. and it was pretty silent and it didn't happen a ton but it did and I remember thinking I think we as a cohort were just kind of like if anything even if you don't have family and friends who could make it because it it is like a it is a financial decision right like it's not especially if you have family overseas it costs money to come to see your your loved ones graduate given that most people are out of state. We as a cohort were kind of just like, when we're standing in line about to get our diploma, like for the people in front of us and even for the people after us, once we like are seated again, um, after having received our diploma or certificate, because it wasn't a real diploma, they gave us like a placeholder, like let's cheer for everybody. And so the first person goes, we cheer. The second person goes, we cheer loudly, like their families, their friends, whatever. And, but like you have like an additional like, 60 people cheering for you and I remember hearing off to the side I don't know who said this but someone was like wow this cohort the support from the cohort even in that little moment meant a lot wow am I getting emotional <laughs> um oh my gosh I haven't gotten emotional about this <laughs> graduation I think I oh my gosh one second okay wow I did not expect that yeah so I remember I think even seeing some names in my cohort that like I'm gonna be honest I've never met them before because maybe they just didn't they were doing their own thing they maybe had their own like life their own like support system so maybe they didn't tap in as much but like our cohort was always there like if you wanted people to come to your birthday if you needed like if you had a question about anything like our cohort was pretty helpful in that way even if you weren't like fully plugged in and so even for a few people where I was like I've never seen that name before but I still cheered loudly for them and I think that there's something to be said because like talking to other of my classmates like some of them didn't have that strong of a cohort and not having kind of like a, a random group of people because that's what we were like the cohorts are meant to like bring people together from different backgrounds racial ethnic from different countries different like work and um, vocational background. So if we didn't have the cohort, I don't think all of us would have come together. I, there's no way. We all had very different interests. And so I think it was just something to be said that like, I think that's what the MBA is about, like really having that kind of experience. And so it was nice to kind of like close it out with like one last cohort moment. And then once the last person across the stage and we were all kind of like seated, we all stood up and we like cheered and just like chanted. Um, Cause it was just, it was just a sign of support. And I, and I loved it because um, no other cohort did that. And we weren't trying to make it like a, oh my gosh, like you guys must be the best cohort. It was just genuinely like we wanted everyone to feel that last bit of support as we like go into like transitioning to supporting us, um, supporting each other like after the MBA. Why am I getting so emotional about this? I literally did not cry during graduation. Um, I literally was not emotional during like the ceremony, the actual ceremony. But I'm excited for like what's to come. People are slowly leaving Philly now and are moving on to like whether they have work started or going moving home while they figure out the next steps. I figured I would probably just stay in Philly until I figure out where I'm getting heading next because spoiler alert, like I'm hoping to end up in New York soon. So it just makes sense for me to come from go straight from Philly to New York. But yeah. So um thank you guys for watching and and if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. I can't wait to show you the journey of like what comes next. I'm kind of like I'm I don't want to say I'm stressed. I'm I'm nervous, but I think that is a sign of like you're pushing yourself because I think one thing I've realized is I 
don't think I've ever, even in undergrad, I don't think I, I never went through like, like a predetermined path, except for when I thought I was going to go into finance. And that's pretty, like the, the, the schedule and like the timeline for that is pretty like well thought out, especially if you're like an entry level. And I think ever since graduating college, I've never had kind of like that, like, this is the next step. This is what you do next. This is like the next role. This is the next type of company you'd work at. And I think I've always kind of had this like feeling that I don't know what's next. I really don't. And um, I, all I know is that I can only lean into things that I'm excited about and passionate about and like continue to kind of like build up my skills, my skill set and like, and just grow. It, right. Like that's all we can do. And I do think things do happen when you're continuously learning and growing. And I'm not talking about learning like you guys all have to sign up for an MBA, but learning in terms of knowing where business line you're excited about is going and how you can be at the forefront of that. And I know that sounds so nebulous and I can't wait to talk more about that, but I just wanted, honestly, I just came here to like close this out for a few minutes, but um, here we are. I will see you guys with the next video. Thank you so much for, um, for anyone who's subscribed because I know that we've had a few new subscribers here. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Also, can we talk about the flowers that my sister got me for graduation? They've been sitting out here for a few days and so they've kind of like wilted a bit, but I just wanted to remember that. Okay, just have that memory in here.